Hey guys, welcome to my mobile office. I am uh, sitting in my truck right now. We are looking at a wiring diagram. And uh, what I am about to do is a no crank problem on a 1997 Jeep Wrangler. A little bit of background information on this. Uh, I spoke to this garage owner over the phone already. And actually I did it with my class and we, it was kind of cool. We, we sat through uh, a uh, speaker phone with the class and, and we were dissecting the diagram and I told this garage owner what to do and I need to share with you what we found so far so you know where I am and why I'm going the direction I'm going so let's take a look at this wiring diagram and uh, the first thing that I did with this garage owner is I had him go to the relay right here this starter relay under the hood and um, I had him do some electrical checks. Now what he told me is down at the starter itself, he can make it crank by jumping power to this brown wire right here. And uh, that would tell me that you know the starter and the main feed are good and we're missing control. So this brown wire then gets its power from this pink and black wire. And the pink and black wire gets its power from this fuse. So, um, what I had him do first was to verify some power feeds. If we look at the diagram, and really this is foundational for any relay, we're looking for two power feeds. So we are looking for control side power, we're looking for load side power. And if we look at the diagram, we can see that our control side power is this yellow circuit, yellow red, and load side power is the pink and black. And then you know, the brown wire goes to the starter and then the brown with a light blue uh, comes down to our park neutral switch for an automatic or manual transmission. It's an auto, so it's a park neutral switch. First thing I had him do, again, was check all four pins. Looking at the diagram, we have to be in the start position for power to be on this yellow red wire and this pink black should be hot all the time. What he told me is he only had one feed. It was hot all the time. So we know then we're missing our yellow red. Now to go a little bit further, I wanted to know if this park neutral switch was working too. Unrelated to that power feed, but I wanted to know. And so what I had him do is connect his test light to battery positive and touch all four pins. Again, relay removed and him not having a diagram, just looking at the circuit. I had him um, check all four while he was going from park to reverse, back to park to reverse. And I'm, what I was thinking about is moving this switch and it worked. And what he had was on this brown with a light blue, he had the light turning on and off, which told me the park neutral switch was working. So I'm not worried before we go to this Jeep, I'm, I'm not worried about this park neutral switch based on the result of his test light to battery positive. Uh, he had uh, another one that was lit constantly, but looking at the brown wire, uh, when you connect a test light to this one, you're just going to get a back feed through the solenoid to ground. Um, not a concern. Uh, we were looking for the light to turn on and off as we went from park to gear. So that circuit's fine. I'm not worried about the pink and black. I'm not worried about the brown. We're going to attack this control side at the ignition switch. So what I need to do is find this yellow wire where it comes out of the ignition switch and then also what comes into the ignition switch. So we need another diagram now. I'm going to go to my power distribution diagram, show you this ignition switch circuit again. And if we look at this, this is the same yellow wire. This is my start circuit and it is a pink and black that comes in right here. This pink and black wire is hot. It's that same 40 amp fuse too, by the way, right? See this 40 amp fuse and then you see this splice right here. Let me go back for a second. I talk too much sometimes, don't I? I hope I'm making myself clear. This is a little bit harder to do with a little mouse pad and I don't have my pens to, to draw on this. I think it's important to have a thought process, a plan before you go into a vehicle. Um, right here, there's my 40 amp fuse. 
pink and black. You see how it splits? This goes to the ignition switch. I don't know why on this diagram they didn't just draw it this way because this ignition switch, pink, black wire, that comes up here, guys. Follow the mouse over right to there. Now there's another splice. It feeds other circuits, but that's where it goes. And when I was on the phone with him after, after seeing this, uh, there were some other things I had him check just to get direction. Think about this. If this pink black wire, this one right here, again, there's your 40 amp fuse. If this pink black wire feeds that start circuit for our starter relay, it also is feeding this run circuit over here. So I'm thinking, well, maybe we have an issue with this pink black wire and on the run circuit, if we follow that, there's some other fuses that get powered up by that. So we could start there. Uh, maybe we will. I was thinking we'll start the ignition switch. Maybe we'll start by checking these fuses real quick. Um, but I had him, I was just looking at something that he could turn on and off. And what I did is I had him turn the uh, rear wipers on. See right here, it says wiper harness near rear wiper motor connector. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking here the rear wiper motor, I had him turn that on and what do you know, it didn't work. So I said to this garage owner, I said, before we put an ignition switch in this thing, we need to verify our wiring coming into the switch, which is this pink black wire. And uh, that's what I'm about to do on this vehicle. So now you know where I'm at. How do I know it's on the control side of the circuit? Because of wiring checks that the garage owner did before I got here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm going right to that ignition switch to do that check on this pink black and then I'll check the yellow um, But I think after talking with you guys before I do that. I'm going to check fuse number five six and Really seven I don't need to see what that one is seven and eight five six seven and eight I want to see if they have power uh, And that is in the fuse block, which is where? I'm guessing maybe inside the car. I don't know, we'll see where that's at. I'll either check those first or I will go to my ignition switch here and here. So remember, pink and black and yellow. And uh, I'll probably have to come back here and look at this. I'm just gonna leave that up. All right, let's go to the Jeep now, huh? So as I'm breaking out my test slate here, guys, um, I am thinking about easiest step. I'm always thinking about next easiest step. And you know what? I don't see the fuse box right away. And you know, I really don't feel like looking for it. So I'm just going to uh, check my wires right here. This is my ignition switch. It's opened up already because this garage owner was in here. And uh, of course, before I, I use my test light to check for a power feed, I need to make sure my test light works, right? All right. So what do we do? Here, watch. Data link connector is right here. Pin 16. Test light's not lighting. So probably a bad ground on my test light. Let's get a different ground under the dash. Or, or the fuse is blown for pin 16. See, I need to check this light. This is really important. I tell my students this all the time. When you're doing electrical troubleshooting, you have to have some known conditions, known constants to go by. I don't have a light there, so let's let's try the. Uh, Let's try the cigarette lighter. I need to see this test light light. This one's a little bit uh, sketchy to use because I don't want the light to touch the sides of this. I got no light there either. What the heck? There's a battery dead on this Jeep. That would be something else if we left the key on. Oh, damn. It's typical. Yeah, this battery is completely dead. I got nothing. I gotta go get a jump pack. Frustrating. I'm trying to do a diagnosis. 
That's frustrating. Trying to do a diagnosis, d battery's completely dead. <laughs> Back to the data link connector. Down here. Here. Always make sure your light has a good ground. And then, you know, doing a troubleshooting or a diagnosis on a job that you assume things is not good. We never assume. In this case, with a dead battery. I got a jump pack on this now. So confirmed that our ground is good. I am going to uh, test this yellow black. That should be hot all the time. And then the yellow should be hot cranking. And yes, I'm poking a small hole. So is my test light showing up? Yep. That's the pink and black. It's not good enough to check that in a non-loaded situation. So we want to reach over and crank it while we're looking at that. That's the crank position. Yellow black is good. And then the yellow, what? I'm sorry, pink and black was good. I think that's the right color. I better go check that diagram again. And then the yellow is the feed coming out. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking of a different color here. I might be wrong. This is the, the, the crank circuit coming out. This one be hot and crank, and it's not. Am I wrong on my feed coming in? I might be. Let me go check that diagram. So I got nothing there cranking. Yeah, it's pink black coming in yellow coming out see I'm, I'm hesitant here um okay black with an orange is the other one i want to look at too that one's hot and run let's look at that one too black orange this black and orange is right here next to that that one this one should be hot in the run position it is. So that's good. See that test lights? That's in the run position. This is crank position. That one goes out. So my pink black's good coming in. That one's good coming out. Why did the rear wipers not work? Would be unrelated. All right. Okay, I'm back to my yellow wire again. That is the crank wire, and it's not lighting up. And from what the garage owner told me, he's already replaced the ignition switch. So, at this point, that's really what my call would be if he hadn't done that already. Um, all right, let's do a little experiment here. Knowing that this yellow wire controls the relay. I'm switching my incandescent test light to battery positive. Okay. And I should be able to start this engine with this test light going to battery positive. Get you a shot of where I'm connected. Just right to the data link connector with a little pin and a jumper wire. And now when I touch ground with my test light, it should light. Okay. So knowing what we know about relays and test lights. With the key in the run position, which it is right now, if I take this test light to that yellow wire, I should be able to start this engine because I'm just energizing the control side of a relay. You ready? Watch. Nothing, that light doesn't even light. I still have a ground? Yes, I do. Okay, that should have cranked this engine. So not only do I have no power coming out, I also have an issue that that test isn't working either. Now did, 
the garage owner put the relay back in, I'd better go check. What is going on? Something's not right. Okay, the, re the relay's back in. Um, park or neutral? See, I am in park. Would there be anything else? No. See, that should have at least lit my test light. Partially, anyway. Nothing. Unless my park neutral switch is an issue, too. Because that wouldn't light it if I didn't have a ground on the other side. And that's the park neutral switch. But I am in park. All right, but we have we have two things going here, guys. I'm back at the diagram. Um, I have no power on the yellow in the crank position, and I have a good feed coming in. Um, and then I also, when I try to manually energize this circuit, back to the starter diagram, that I can't. can't do it the automatic it would be me taking power here on the yellow which would just be going to the control side of the relay and then going to ground through the part neutral switch which this garage owner already tested not I, I would need to check that because it didn't react however it's two issues I don't have power here and I should I don't um, could that circuit be shorted to ground if it was that would blow the fuse which is this 40 amp fuse here something's goofy the ignition switch was replaced definitely want to look at that connector that pin but i i should be able to energize this i'm going to come up here to the relay up front and do a couple of checks on this brown and light blue. I, I want to address that part first to this park neutral switch. So I'm going to move up front for a minute. All right, still rolling here. See the relay has been replaced too. It's a newer relay. Um, I'm going to redo the checks up here. In particular, that park neutral switch is the circuit I, I am uh, concerned about. The other thing I could do too, knowing these five pin relay setups that these two are control and these guys are your load that one's not being used that's a normally closed load this middle one normally open over here or here uh, what I could do is with this relay no nope, can't get in there well I could use my my other tool that I have I'm just thinking of the easiest way here guys uh, let's do this first because I don't feel like grabbing another tool right now I just want to check that part neutral switch, so I'm going to battery positive with my test light. Of course, I'm always making sure my test light lights, and it is not lighting. Yes, it is. Right, test light's lighting. Um, control side, I'm worried about. That's the, these two guys are the ones I'm testing right here. And, all right, you see right there, that one is lit. And I'm going to throw this in gear, and that should go out. Light is out in gear this is the test I had him do this is valid that's that there's nothing wrong with that part neutral switch watch the test light I'll go back to park that's back in park so it's ground side switch this relay it has a ground for sure so then I know now that this side this other side sorry it would be this one when I plug this back in needs a power to energize the relay now if I can 
sneak in there and grab that, then I can, uh, if I can sneak in there and grab it, you see what just happened there? I had my test light a little too close to that body ground right there. That, that wasn't good. Gotta pay attention a little bit. Um, if I can sneak in here, I should be able to use my test light. I'm on um, battery positive, yeah. I need to give it a, a power. And before I do that, let's make sure I'm back in park and my e-brake's on. Gotta be careful when you're doing this stuff like this. Okay. In park, e-brake is on. I'm going to crank it out here with my test light. I should be able to, if I can access this pin. Don't know if I can or not. Cool. All right, so some known goods, known bads from the relay out, we're fine. Nothing wrong with the circuit at all. Nothing wrong with the park neutral switch either. I'm missing a control, but we already knew that. Why couldn't I do that from the front? I should have been able to do that from the front. All I was doing with that yellow wire going to battery positive is doing the same thing I did right here, which is access that pin and crank this circuit, crank this starter, energize the relay. I don't like that. So I have an open between ignition switch and here, but that doesn't address why the yellow wire doesn't have power when I'm cranking it. So we have two problems here and the ignition switch is new. So maybe I'm not contacting the yellow wire. I mean, I, you saw I'm poking holes in the wires and I don't like to poke holes in wires, but sometimes you have to. And hey, we're inside the car. It's not gonna get wet, it's fine. Uh, I need to go back inside. We're good out here. I need to address why I don't have power on that yellow wire. I think I wanna do that first before I address a potential open in here. A short to ground, I don't think so, guys. If that circuit was shorted to ground in between here, number one, my test light would be lit when I went to battery positive on that yellow wire, and number two, it would blow that 40 amp fuse, which is one of these guys out here. That's not the case. Let's go back inside. All right, so yellow wire. I'm gonna go to ground again first. Make sure my test light lights. It is lighting. That yellow wire should be hot in the crank position. And it is most certainly not. And I am definitely contacting that. Unless there's more than one yellow wire going to this ignition switch. And I am testing the wrong one. Now, we were just looking at a partial view of this circuit. Now, I do not see another yellow wire. That is the only yellow wire. And I don't see it being a damaged pin. So battery positive to this yellow wire. Should be able to crank this engine, or at least energize the relay. It won't crank, or it won't start now with the, with the uh, ignition switch off, but should be able to crank it. Just checking my light. There's an open in this yellow wire. Is there a jumper in here? Is there a remote start? If 
but I should also have power there cranking, and I don't. So I don't like that either. I, I don't know why. That's you know, two separate problems. And that is a new ignition switch. I mean, hands down, I would put an ignition switch in this, but I should be able to energize this circuit and I can't. So I, I need to check this yellow. Let's, here's what I do. This is a good lesson. I want to have things that don't make sense, things that aren't adding up. Don't get lost on that. Go with what you know. And I know for a fact right now that I should be able to make this starter crank by giving this yellow wire a power, and I cannot. So I know for a fact I have an open in this yellow circuit. Let's attack the open first, and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to take a look under the dash. I can't get the camera under there with me at the same time. I want to see if this thing has a remote start of some type in it that shouldn't be there. Uh, or even an, uh, an aftermarket alarm system that, that they typically cut a crank wire like that. I'm going to take a look under the dash. This was supposed to be an easy one. There's that splice. And that's right by the, this is the left kick panel area. And I didn't see any aftermarket stuff. Um, but I do see, I don't like that tape right there. That looks like it's been messed with. Hard to say. But up in here, that looks like factory tape. And then you come down here and you see this. I don't like that. Anyway, here's that jumper. We'll be able to do checks right there very easily. Uh, at the bottom of it, let's see if I can show you. Yeah, there's yellow, then yellow, red. So yellow, red goes to the relay. I'm going to do that same battery positive test with the test light right there. I will just get you a shot up here, guys. I'm sorry. I, I cannot get the camera under there and do this test. Going to bat battery positive at the data link connector. Checking my test light always to make sure that it lights. You see when I touch ground, test light's lighting. I'm gonna go underneath and I should be able to, and I have the ignition switch off, that connector's unplugged, none of that, none of that should matter. I should be able to make this thing crank under here at this connector. You hear that? I am smiling. Um, on the yellow red side of the circuit, I can make this thing crank. Listen to it again. So open in here is at that jumper connector. Get this down where we can, now I can show it to you. All right, let's take a look here, guys. This is what I was doing underneath is on the yellow red, watch. Now, why couldn't I do that up here at the ignition switch? Let's go on the other side. This would be this yellow wire on this side comes from the switch. So this connector is good. This jumper is good. All right, that wire, just so you guys are clear, this wire here comes from the ignition switch. It loops through, turns into yellow and red this loop is here for a I believe manual transmission there's differences and then uh, yellow red goes to the starter um, relay control side now why they made this wire so fat i don't know it didn't need to be there's only 100 milliamps on here and that's why i can make it start with my incandescent test light so our concern is from ignition switch up here down to here because watch i can make it go from here right now back up to here I should be able to make it crank from here same yellow wire battery positive look I cannot I cannot make that crank so I have an open in between the two now, what am I looking at here ah there is something aftermarket here. I can see it now. 
I couldn't see it a minute ago. <laughs> Stupid. That's why we don't put this kind of crap in these cars. There is a splice here. You know, should have had that panel off in the first place. Um, let's get this metal panel off too so I can show you guys what I'm talking about here. This is, um, just grabbing a screwdriver. This is fun. I am, uh, I am enjoying myself. I don't know, you know, some of you guys think my videos are too long, whatever. I, you know what? I don't really care. I'm not in this for the quick silver bullet thing. This is the way it is, man. This is troubleshooting. You gotta be able to think. You gotta be able to have direction. You gotta be able to change up on the fly, if you know what I mean. Check it out. Aftermarket crap right here. See the yellow wire? This is not factory. I don't know what it is. Um, if something was removed at some point in time, but uh, hmm. our issue is this yellow wire right here where it goes into this relay. So this relay is aftermarket and uh, you know, one of the things that I never worry about when I see aftermarket stuff like this is fixing the aftermarket thing. And the reason why is I don't have a wiring diagram. I'm not going to chase this circuit. What I'm going to do is fix our condition. Let me get a pair of cutters. see what I'm doing here oh I see it now look what is it it's that piece of crap right there this thing right there <laughs> that's what's going to control this relay it's like one of those yeah that's you know what these things are so easy to bypass if you know how all they're doing is they're using this system to energize a relay, right? To open the crank circuit. Guys, this is not my concern. I'm not fixing this. So I'm gonna restore this back to the way it should be, right? Yellow wire right here, which is, has been cut already. There's the, the butt connector, goes to the relay, and then they run the other side. Here's the other half of the yellow wire. We need to get this out of here too. There's another butt connector under here. You know what, for now, because I'm afraid I'm gonna have an issue with this video length, battery life. This needs to be, here's the way this needs to be fixed. You cut this butt connector out, you reattach these two, which is this, I'm gonna do it right here for now. All right, there's my other yellow. Let's strip this back. Let's strip this back for now. This is a temporary for this video right now. This is not permanent. I'm just reattaching my yellow wire. Now watch from up here, what I was trying to do the whole time. You ready? Watch. Why is that lit? That should not be lit like that. Did you see that? I should be able to crank this. Any different yellow wire? Darn it. Where is my knife when I need it? Load side. All right, where are we going here? Load side. Oh, I did. That is a different yellow wire. You can't go by colors. I'm trying to hurry. Stupid. Should have taken this apart. Um, I was looking at this to know that. Watch. This is the one here from the 
uh, ignition switch up here, load side, then it turns to black. They had a different yellow wire. So I definitely attached the wrong one, which is why that didn't work. Here's the half I need. It's okay, I just jumped a uh, power through my test light into this control circuit. I don't care, it's not a big deal. This stuff's coming out anyway, right? Wrong wire, here's the one. Yellow turns into black. And uh, I need that one off, that's this one here. What I'll do for now, because this will need to be fixed properly is uh then nah, i can't do that let's just strip this back ah that should work let you see it from here first watch you hear the starter cranking hopefully sweet and then up here watch at the what we want to do in the first place Okay, now, we fixed the open, didn't we? However, we did not take care of the no power coming out of this ignition switch. We didn't plug this back in to the switch. Plug this back in. And uh, I should have power here. Let's see if I can crank it. Put the key in. Yeah, see? Cranking it, still have no power. Now, back to this, guys. Battery positive. All right, car is running now. This is what I tried to do in the first place. Watch keys on I'm gonna do it from here original testing as soon as that stops beeping ready watch all right we're not getting power still let me switch my test light test lights going back to battery ground now and I want to test my test light again anytime I move it test your test light this was battery positive on my left hand Right, test light's going to ground now. This should be lit, and actually what I can do is I can just clip it onto here. I can just touch it on there. Uh, this should be lighting, right here, should be lighting when I crank it. And as you can see, it is not. Okay, now that our circuit is, uh, is actually truly loaded, I wanna go back to this pink black see I don't see that being a problem where did he get this ignition switch mate you know what did he put the old old one back in did he put the old ignition switch back in I need to go ask him because this this looks like a bad ignition switch I mean there's no question about it I have a good feed that's this pink black right here pink black see it's lit crank it over watch I'm not losing that feed, but I'm never getting the feed out. Let's go ask them. I'm not gonna put them on camera. Did you put the old ignition switch back in that? No. Did it look old? You didn't put the old ignition switch back in that? Uh -huh. That switch is bad. The main problem is there was an aftermarket piece that was installed. Oh, I don't think I put this. Old switch in, <laughs> old switch in, come out of the box. Um, here's the thing, right? Right here. This is the old one, it should be the old one. That's not old. Yes it is, look, see the, see the bolt hole? That was on, this was on. See the bolt, see that, that's why, that screw thing? That so, so you're telling me we, we put in a bad new ignition switch? It's brand new. Unless, is there any adjustments on this piece? I have no idea. Here, check this out, right? Watch. 
keys in the run position. Just so you know, the, the problem was this. See the relay hanging here? Okay. Hold on, I'm still going live here, so. The problem was this relay, right? Which is this thing. See that? That was your issue. So, the issue now, we have to reattach this, and I will, right. off, off the uh, camera, but um, what one of the things, all right, so look, nothing, right? No power cranking. My feed's good going in right here. Okay, nothing coming out right here. That is a bad ignition switch. Um, combined with an open in the yellow wire. Now, if I switch this, just to prove it to you that we're gonna be good once we change this ignition switch back. Watch, watch this, off. ready? Okay, I'm missing power. This switch, this new switch you put in is bad. Put the old one I, that's what I want. That here's, here's the thing. I think, wait till that stops beeping. I think exactly that, that this new switch you put in is faulty and that the whole problem the whole time was this stuff. We're gonna put the old ignition switch back in. Here, you do it. Just don't bump my camera. Here, let's see what that looks like. Why don't you show my viewers what tool you just used to take that off. You don't have to say anything, just open it up, show the pliers on the camera. Nice. The new one, I can just plug it back on. You know, this is what makes troubleshooting difficult sometimes when you get a bad part. All right, now the only other thing, the only other thing too would be the, the location of this. I had the key in the run position. Does this need to be off, you think? So it's really not, really can't go in wrong. Because that's spring-loaded, isn't it? Inside mm -hmm. of it here. It won't go in unless you have it turned to the right spot and then you can turn it back. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, This might have turned already. Gotcha. I might try turning that. <laughs> Freaking bad part. All right, just so you guys can... We got to bolt this up still, but listen. So, how bad was that, dude? I mean, we... Had a problem with the wiring, no question. And the ignition switch was replaced and we built in a problem with the new ignition switch. So here's the good thing we still had the old one. That's ridiculous, a bad part. But it happens. This isn't the prettiest fix in the world. I know some of you guys are gonna make fun of me for what I just did to fix this butt connector but I don't care I'm happy with that that's not going anywhere I tugged on it real hard this crap all of this can go away it's going down to that aftermarket piece that it was will no longer work and uh, I don't like wires hanging out here though All right, so lesson learned here, guys, right? Don't overanalyze things. Go with what you know, which was the lesson here, right? And we attacked the open in the yellow circuit. We had two separate problems, crazy. Brand new switch, you don't think that. All right, just so you guys have a visual now, my test light's back to ground. I'll show you the pink, black, see it light. Going back to the yellow wire. When you crank this on a good system, watch the test light. Crank only. As you can see, cranking, we should have that. And the cool thing about this, guys, if you've been following me, this material is in section three. It's really what I'm following here, section three in my book and in my classroom lectures, my case studies. You understand power ground side switching, you'll understand that you can take a test light on the control side of a relay connected with the correct polarity and crank an engine over, watch. Now watch the test light, it's dim. 
Why is the test light dim? Why would the test light be bright? Why you have to use a incandescent test light? You can't use an LED test light. All that material is in there. So check it out. Hope you guys like that. I'll wrap this up. I'm not gonna film the rest of me removing the, this aftermarket piece. Thank you very much. That was fun.